what I'm standing in here is three different varieties of sweet clover. Uh, three separate species of sweet clover. Sweet clover, I think, is a really underutilized plant. Uh, we should be using more sweet clover. At one time, sweet clover was the number one cover crop in America. Prior to World War II and the advent of cheap nitrogen fertilizer, sweet clover was used extensively throughout the United States. Very popular in the Corn Belt, um, and they used to use sweet clover as a green manure crop prior to growing a crop of corn. And at the yield levels we had at that time, you know, where 80 to 100 bushel corn was kind of top end yield, sweet clover could produce all the nitrogen needed by a corn crop. And so plowing down a crop of sweet clover was a very common practice prior to World War II. Once we got cheap anhydrous ammonia, everybody forgot about sweet clover. But the plant hasn't changed. It's still a very beneficial plant. Not only is it a great nitrogen fixer, it's very tolerant among legumes. It's got a very deep tap root. A lot of these clovers and, and small, uh, large seeded legumes don't have good tap roots. Sweet clover has a monster tap root. It's uh, almost as deep as alfalfa and gets deep quicker than alfalfa plants. Um, We've got, like I said, three different types of sweet clover. Over here, we have yellow blossom sweet clover, which is the most commonly used sweet clover. Probably the most drought tolerant of the sweet clovers. Um, and it is the first to bloom in the spring. Um, all the sweet clovers we would typically seed in this area in early spring. And the yellow blossom sweet clover is a biennial, so it grows vegetatively the first year goes through the winter and then blooms in this area starting in May and continues blooming through June. So what we have here is of course the first year vegetative growth. White sweet clover or white blossom sweet clover is another biennial plant in the spring of one year so this is 2019 grows vegetatively in 2019 and then the spring of 2020, this will be, get up big and tall, it will start blooming in June of the second year and will continue for about a month. And so it kind of hands off the bloom in a relay race to, from takes the baton from the yellow blossom sweet clover and then this will take over for about an additional month and it gets a little bit larger than the yellow blossom sweet clover, fixes a little more total nitrogen, it takes a little longer to do it, not quite as rapid developing as the yellow blossom. So similar plants, but slightly different and have a little bit different purpose. The Hubam sweet clover over here is a true annual sweet clover. It will, in the northern areas, like, like here in Nebraska, we can spring plant this and it will start blooming in August. So it'll bloom August, September, clear on up till frost. And uh, for people who are interested in bees and pollinators, one of the harder times to get bloom in pasture type situations, open areas, is in that August, September. There's not many plants that bloom in fall. Because if you think about it, it's not very good for a plant to be blooming right before frost is going to kill the blossoms off. So it's kind of an evolutionary dead end. But Hubam clover is one of those plants that can do that. And so, uh, very rapid turn turnaround time between bloom and seed set. So this can bloom late in the year when nothing else is blooming pretty much. And, and so that makes this Hubam fantastic, fantastic plant for, for bees, uh, honeybees, pollinators of all kinds, and, and of course for uh, attracting ladybugs and lace wings and all those other things that would be a nectar and pollen for plants. In the south, Hubam is used as a winter annual. You fall plant it, and it's one of the first things to bloom the following spring. So depending on where you use Hubam, uh, it is used differently. We said in 
the northern areas here, you get north of about I-40. Uh, this is a spring planted crop. You get south of I-40, it's a fall planted crop. And uh, all the sweet clovers are not plants that you want to make hay out of. They make very poor quality hay. If that hay gets molding, it can cause some bleeding issues with animals, failure of blood clot. As a grazing plant though, these plants are fine. They're not super palatable, but they are very nutritious. They have a bitter flavor, but they're high in protein, highly digestible. Once animals get accustomed to it, they perform very well on sweet clover pasture. So uh, as long as you don't try to make hay out of them, very versatile plants, deep taproot, help free up unavailable phosphorus, potassium in the soil, make a lot of nitrogen, break holes through hard pans, there's a lot to like about these sweet, three sweet flavors. And if you are interested in beekeeping with pollinators, uh, you can basically provide a sequence of season-long bloom beginning in mid-May with the yellow blossom, transitioning to the white blossom, and then finally to the Hubam clover. Have, have pollen production, nectar production starting in mid-May going clear on down to frost and, and very good honey honey quality and, and yield of honey for acre.